Hello everybody, my name is Jelte and this is the third episode of our Ultimate CI series. If you're joining us for the first time, there's a link for the first episode in the top right hand corner. And if you missed the last episode, there's a link for that as well. So last time we had our first raid and our first drop part, which left us with a little more steel, but more importantly, a good deal of clothes. A luxury that K has already taken advantage of. As you can see, Kay has a lot of cleanup to do around our base, so once she's had her breakfast, she'll get started on that. But while Kay gets her rest, we'll put up a stove and forbid it, because we do want to prioritize batteries and walls before building it. Kay's also not in a great mood this morning. Surprisingly, she is less concerned with the corpses lying outside her room than she is about being too busy to throw horseshoes. Kay's up and about and quickly devours her breakfast before putting on the sheep wool shirt that we got from our crashed guests in the last episode. And now she'll start cleaning the mess they made. There we go, and Kay is eager to deconstruct the charred chunk of spacecraft nearby, but she better get warmed up first. So we'll come back to her in a bit. Kay's nice and comfortable, and we can't have that, so let's send her out to deconstruct that ship. In spite of its reasonable proximity to our base, at 93 degrees below zero, Kay will certainly have minor hypothermia before she's done. But as long as she stays out of serious range, we're quite happy with that result. The chunk will also yield us 8 components and 30 units of much needed steel. Now Kay has dropped everything off, we can see that we now have 33 components, with only 16 left on the map, which is quite good. But for now Kay will spend the rest of the day researching, only taking a short break in an otherwise productive day for a bit of well-deserved break time. Kay's going to start off the day with breakfast before uninstalling our smelter and hauling our hair in preparation of the expansion of our base. No, apparently Kay has other plans, so we'll let her finish that and then haul the hair before getting rid of that pesky hypothermia. And we have the first event of the episode. A large meteorite has smashed onto the sea ice, and the fact that it didn't go through the ice must be a testament to how frozen this rim world is. However, it looks like Randy and I may have different definitions of large, but we can't complain about the prospect of getting some limestone, as it is the second strongest stone type. Kay has finally finished researching batteries, which is going to make her life a bit easier. Next up is hydroponics, as a sustainable food supply is one of our major objectives. Afterwards, we'll most likely research microelectronics to get access to trading. Because once you get below minus 40 degrees, you'll never have visitors or traders coming by. For now, Kay is going to build two batteries, which is going to cost us a total of 140 steel and four components. As you can see, at minus 111 degrees, case hypothermia is increasing rapidly, and I doubt we'll be able to finish both in one trip. Out of an abundance of caution, we'll send K back inside, although admittedly I didn't notice that K was that close to finished. However, since there's no way we'll lose any precious electricity due to that, we'll let her research for a bit. Case hypothermia is gone, and it's time to finish our second battery. There we are. Now let's get started on the stove. No, let's not. That's a classic do as I say, not as I do moment. Walls are more important right now. Although it will cost us an additional 30 steel, we are actually going to build corners on our rooms because it will insulate our base a little more. We're going with a 4x4 because it'll create enough room for a table and a doorway in the side there. We won't be tearing down the wall between the two rooms, partly because we would need at least 4 heaters to maintain a positive temperature in there, and partly because the second room will be our freezer for a while. 
We'll keep a close eye on Kay's hypothermia and hope that she doesn't barge too much. If you're asking yourself why we still haven't made an airlock, that's simply because it won't be the main entrance to our base as we expand further, so we'll save those resources for now. Kay has reached minor hypothermia and it's time to send her back inside. Let's bit the corner there. <laughs> Kay is hard working and crafty so she noticed that I got distracted by meal time and did the other corner instead. Fortunately without incidents. We'll let her eat and come back to her later on. It looks like Kay is ready to finish off the construction. Focus, Kay, you're throwing away valuable steel. So it's finally time to build our stove. But first, let's hold that steel and move the pen. Okay, we'll just expand the roof again and make a little hole like before. We should probably close the old one too while we're at it. And with that, Kay's off to bed, so we'll join her again in the morning. If you joined us for our last episode, you might be wondering why we haven't put on the other parker yet, which would get rid of the Radi Apparel debuff and add a few degrees of cold insulation. That's because we currently have both the Initial Hope and the Extremely Low Expectations buffs, which should be enough to keep Kay from becoming a major break risk most of the time, although she would probably appreciate more protection against the cold. However, the parka we're currently wearing is already next to worthless, so by using it at the very least to when Kay loses her initial hope because she realizes how unforgiving and lifeless the sea ice is, we're prolonging the life of the other parka. So it'll both last longer and be worth more if we can sell it. Granted, it's only going to make a minor difference, but a difference nonetheless. We're going to give fine meals top priority here, as you can see Kay can't cook them yet, nor do we have the resources for them, but once we can make them, we certainly will. Then we'll queue up some simple meals. We won't bother with lavish meals since we're unlikely to get enough food to waste in such a fashion anytime soon. Obviously we're not gonna cook with the insect jelly and we won't use all kinds of meat for the fine meals. But we hold no such reservations about simple meals. Now one of the primary issues Kay has is the lack of recreation, or rather the lack of variety in it. You can only throw horseshoes for so long before wanting to impale yourself with the pen. So we'll move the stove and build a stool on the table for her there for an effective use of space in close proximity to her bedroom since she's too fussy to use her bed as a stool when eating. For now it will only give her the opportunity to relax socially alone, although that is a bit of an oxymoron. Later on it will also help with the 8 without the table debuff, but for now she will probably eat in her bedroom because our freezer is too cold. Unfortunately, although Kay's construction skill is at 5, it still isn't exactly great so she only managed to produce a poor table. And she managed to butt the stool as well, despite not even shivering, which is especially unfortunate as our steel reserves are almost depleted. Kay has decided to take advantage of her new stool and when she's done, let's just have her hold that knife. Admittedly, I owe you an apology here because I forgot to show you how the stool turned out. It was normal quality, so that's alright. I'm still getting the hang of the whole recording thing. We'll put up a lamp here, although for now that's more aspirational than anything else. 
While Kay's researching, we get our first quest of the episode. We have some higher up in our local friendly intergalactic empire, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, who wants us to take care of her bear for two days as it has been targeted by a not so friendly mechanoid swarm. With this quest we can look forward to have one or two mech clusters drop onto the sea ice and she will give us a janissary to aid in the defense of her bear. And if the bear survives, we'll get two royal favor for our troubles. Now if we accept the quest and simply slaughter the bear immediately, we should fail the quest and the cluster shouldn't drop from orbit. However, I'm admittedly unsure of what kind of relationship hit we will take from that, but I believe it's around 30, and since we won't be desperate for food anytime soon, I want to avoid souring our relationship just yet, so I think we're going to pass on this. We could of course try to complete the quest, but mech clusters, particularly those that land in inopportune places, can be quite problematic on sea ice, so that's frankly not something I would seriously consider at this point in the game. We are all the way up to minus 73 degrees, so we're not going to pass on this opportunity to collect the last of the steel that's scattered around the map. We could also try to go for one of those ship chunks, but let's leave them as a contingency against our inevitable mental breaks. K managed to get 24 units of steel, which is by no means impressive, but it still makes out about 25% of what we have left. Which means that we have 100 and what? 34 units of steel left, including the knife and the slag. K's return also fits nicely with her bedtime, so we'll let her sleep and return to her in the morning. As Kay's about to get up, we get another quest. This time it's called Compensated Defense. Condor Tora, the chief of the Trado tribe, wants us to draw some raiders away from one of their caravans. There'll be two drifters and two scavenger gunners in the first group, and two groups of a similar size will follow it. And Condor is offering us two luciferium and 210 steel for our services. In terms of the price, that doesn't seem unreasonable, and if it were colder and we had another pawn with a bolt action rifle or a similarly ranged weapon, this would be worth consideration. However, as things stand, it's far too warm outside with far too many raiders for Kay to handle on her own, so we'll have to pass on this one as well. Kay's going to start off the day with something to eat and then we're actually going to take advantage of the good mood she's in because it's finally time for her to actively break the Geneva Convention. We're going to butcher those corpses now because we don't want her to have both the butchered humans and cooked cannibalism debuffs at the same time. In other words, we're going to create a contingency against starvation right now instead of waiting until we're forced to do so. Notice that she did elect to eat in her bedroom by the way. A bit impractical of her to leave the lever in the doorway there, but she'll survive. Alright, there we are, that gave us 96 units of human flesh, along with 53 units of human lever, that's not too bad. It did however come at the cost of a minus 11 debuff for the next 6 days, so we'll have to be careful not to push her too hard during the next week. Kay's going to relax for a bit and presumably contemplate the horrors of her actions before she gets back to work so we'll come back to her. Another meteorite is crashing down, let's see. This time it's an even smaller meteorite but it is steel which is of course greatly appreciated. It seems that we have appeased Randy with our bloodletting in the last episode because he is certainly being generous. Although we would have preferred the steel to be considerably closer to our base, as we are at minus 80 degrees again. Like the other one, we'll mark it for mining, although again that is aspirational. But this does mean that it's starting to become worth considering to send K out to mine without finishing any tiles before she's gotten at least a couple of skill points in mining, but it's too far away for now. Let's have Kay cook some meals now in preparation of her eventual mental break. However, we're not going to mix and match though, so let's get that hair meat out of here. A 
A couple of hours before bedtime, Kay has finally finished making 9 succulent meals of human meat. We're going to let her eat now, although not one of those, because there is a little time before she goes to bed and with her extra debuffs we don't want to increase her break risk. Our tactics in that regard will probably shift once we get our second colonist though, but we will burn that bridge when we get to it. Randy really has his eye on Kay today because he's sending manhunters after her, so let's see what animal has wandered onto the sea ice. Me Megasloths. Plural? Well that's promising. Two of them. Oof. Praise be to Randy. I don't know if Kay has made Randy all hot and bothered, or if he just wanted to make her efforts over the last few days an exercise in futility. Either way, it's probably among the best events that we could get. Because somewhat counterintuitively, while Megasloth wool is the second best insulating fabric in Rimworld, and heavy fur, which is what we'll be getting, is the fourth best. Megasloths only have a comfortable temperature down to minus 55 degrees, so they'll be downed in no time out here. Heavy fur parkas also have the added benefit of the fifth highest sharp armor rating among parkas in Rimworld, and most weapons use sharp damage, so that could hardly get any better. So Kay is just going to research indoors and wait for them to succumb to the weather. There we go and we want to kill them as quickly as possible because we don't want them to lose any limbs to frostbite because that will decrease our yield. That does however leave us with a couple of problems. Firstly because butchering them will pretty much fill up our storage. Hashtag them good problems. And secondly, there is no way that we're going to butcher them in a spot. We want the best possible yield here because it should give us around 180-200 units of meat I would say, given Kay's cooking skills, and more importantly, more than 80 units of heavy fur apiece. We need 20 units of wood for a butcher table, and we only have 15. Fortunately, in the first episode we built our door from wood to increase our chances of surviving our first minutes. For now though, Kay's going to relax for a bit and then have some lunch before returning to her research till my mind has finished its slow churning and concluded that that is indeed the best option. Alright, let's deconstruct that door. That yielded 19 units of wood, which is normal. Occasionally you'll only get 18, but I don't think I've ever seen it give more or less than that. There we are. And now for the butcher table. Kay's just going to move the last of the human meat around. No she won't, cause we already out of room. Well we have to uninstall the stove before we start butchering anyway. Back inside with ya. Now we're not going to take any chances on the table, so Kay's going to return to her research till she has stopped shivering. Lovely. So two bills, one for animals and one for select humans. We won't set the bill to drop the meat on the floor, cause we're going to be moving stuff around as we go along, so there's no telling where we will be butchering next time. It's time to make room in the stockpile, so Kay's going to caravan the human lever into her bedroom, uninstall the stove, and haul that and the smelter outside before going to bed. I suspect you might find a minute and a half of that tedious, so I decided to cut that out, but if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. Obviously, if that's the footage you've been waiting for, I apologize. I will be happy to create a hauling outtakes video, just for you. We join K once more for breakfast and a bit of wreck. Let's remove that aspirational lamp as well. Our aspirations aren't that fancy right now. We'll also wait for case hypothermia to subside to ensure maximum yield.
Ooh, how much is that? 204 megaslav meat and 93 units of heavy fur. That's just beautiful. However, we don't actually have room for more, so we won't bother butchering the other one yet. But right now, Kay is going to uninstall the table and put that stove back up so she can get cooking. We'll just have to wait a little while for her hypothermia again. Actually, before she gets started cooking, let's get rid of that knife as well, so we'll have a little more room. Sadly, that little knife should double our current steel reserves, which is slightly depressing, but hopefully going to change soon. Yeah, we're up to 14 now and Kay's going to go for the slag as well. Let's see if she can manage it all in one trip. And there we have serious hypothermia. Notice how slowly she works now. Despite being halfway through before hitting it, she'll probably be down by it before she finishes smelting. So we'll have to live with that unsuccessful result, send her back inside and return to her once her hypothermia is gone. Although it's practically bedtime, Kay still has a bit of time before she gets tired so she will actually eat now because I would like us to be done with the steel today and it's too risky to send her out with both a ravenous and an absolutely freezing debuff. Good, now she's earned her rest and we'll return to her in the morning. Kay has been up for a little while researching, but it's time for her to get cooking, which she'll be doing for the rest of the day, so we'll come back to her in the evening. While Kay takes a little time to relax before she goes to bed, I think it's about time to end today's episode. It has been a calm one, Kay expanded our base and Randy showed us his most generous side but I suspect that won't last, but we'll see in the next episode. If you want to find out what happens next, click the subscribe button and as always if you have any comments, questions or requests, write them in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video please leave a like, it will be much appreciated. Thanks for joining us.